So hello and welcome to a tutorial, intermediate level tutorial on Anchor, which is a framework for Solana's, you know, whatever that is. Basically, it makes writing Solana programs really easy. And for this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you've already know what Anchor is, that you've, you know, installed all the dependencies, you know, you've installed Anchor, you've installed the node packages, um, I assume you know JavaScript and a little bit of Rust. Um, I'm going to assume you've gone through all of these um, tutorial examples. So you basically you know what an account is in Solana. Uh, you know uh, how you have to submit accounts, uh, that there's data on the accounts. Um, I'm assuming that you know the programming model that uh, Anchor follows. For example, uh, basically just that there's a bunch of functions and with each function, um, you pass in a list of accounts and on each of those accounts there might be some data stored and you can define it that way and all this information gets very nicely structured into an idl the sort of what does it even stand for um interface description language and makes it very easy to program you know in solana i'm assuming that you already know where all the rest documentation is for anchor so i think it's just here it's just yeah anchor lang uh, docs.rs slash anchor lang and you know where the sun SDK uh, rest SDK stuff is for example and then also just like some of the key stuff like uh, serum serum github uh, JavaScript libraries there's some useful things there so there's there's three main things to think about there's three there's three most important things i think um to learn uh, for anchor and solana which are program derived addresses um cross-program invocation and account access constraints so program derived addresses are basically addresses that don't have a private key and they're derived using a set of seeds um, can be a string, but usually it's a, a public key of a known account that you can use as a reference. And these can be used to sign transactions inside of programs, which is very handy. You can also store data on them um, that's just like specific to a, to a specific account um, or program. Then cross-program invocation. Uh, it's, it's just sort of what it says in the tin. It's just about calling a program from inside of another Solana program. And then account access constraints are something that Anchor uh, introduces, which make it very easy to make sure that when someone submits an account to your program, it is the correct one, that it has the correct owner, uh, it's the signer, um, it's got all the, like, just sort of verified all the information surrounding it, uh, which is quite important. So to sort of demonstrate these three principles or three ideas, um, I'm going to go through a very quick tutorial on um, trading all your money in for dog money. So trading all your USD uh, for dog money. So we'll just try and do this quickly. Anchor dog money. All right. Anchor test. Okay. Let's see. Let's set that build and refresh. Okay, we got dog money. Perfect. Okay, so pro, let's just do program derived addresses first. So okay, so first off, you're going to want a just a general data account. So dot. Uh, it's a new. Um, it's a new thing. Was it anchor.web3.publickey.generate? We have our data account. So we want a so in order to have our um in order to have our program print money, um it needs to be able to have control over a mint. Um which means it needs to be able to sign transactions. So we need to have a program signer, which is going to be a program derived address. Uh, so I'll just show you how this works now. 
So this is just how I learned how to do it, copying from the um, from the examples that our Manny has. And program address. Um, So program drive addresses use a seed, which in this case is just one, one public key, and then also um, the program ID so that it knows who the owner is. Um, and then we just assign program signer. So that's that's it really. That's a you you get the nonce as well. Um, nonce just allows you to find the program address faster. So if you store the nonce um, on your program, you can just take the data account public key and the nonce and you get the program address like instantly uh, versus having to look it up every time because this has to iterate through all the different nonces until it finds one that works well with this particular seed. Okay, so that's one type of program address, program derived address. And then another one, which is, just put a little comment on that, And then we're going to do associated account. So this is if you want to store data. So, oh yes, we might want to save this one till we actually initialize the mints. Okay, so we're making dog money. Um, so I just have to quickly, perfect. Perfect, why could it go 3.generate is not a function. Um, oh, key pair. Fair enough. Um, now, what are we looking for? We're going to CP IDO pool index with tests. You tell us, okay. Uh, tests. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we will just copy over the same set of requirements. Perfect. Um, so we're going to quickly, this is stuff that you might already know how to do. You should know how to do already. Provider is not in here yet. Okay, so what are we doing? We are program dot provider um, and then who's gonna be the uh, program mint oh yeah provider sorry, sorry. program dot provider dot wallet public key should should work okay okay so create the USDC mint and yeah, that should be fine for now. Um, 
Okay, so now that we have the USDC mint, we're going to do our associated account. Okay, so we're just going to call this user data. Um, and then that's USDC mint as well. Perfect. Although that's pretty long. So that's our associated address where the user data is going to go. And again, this is a public key, I'm pretty sure. Um, and this is going to store something stupid, like, you know, it's just going to store some user data. Like, I think we're just going to store when they, when they created the account. So let's just quickly save that and actually just look at the program. So let's just call this initialize user. Um, that's better. Um, right. So Let's look at the two different types of accounts that we're getting in. One is going to be the program signer. So we're going to have program signer, something like, I think it's account info, which I think is it's perfectly personal, but confusing. Um, and then for the associated account, it's going to be account associated equals authority with equals USDC underscore mint. Uh, and this is going to be, what did we call it? User data? Oh, it's just user data. Um, so, question is, can, is it going to be program account info? I think it's capitals for other things. Just check what the uh, the normal way these things are done is. Okay, and then on user data, I think we're just going to store something very basic like uh, pub, I don't know, um, first deposit, just so that you can boast about when you first uh, first deposited some money to the dog money bank account. Okay, sorry, so program signer looks like this doesn't doesn't really require very much else going in there however uh, associated accounts require quite a lot extra so we're gonna need uh, authority which is going to be a an account info um, 
and it's also going to have a signer. I think it's a signer. Yeah, it's a count signer. Perfect. Um, what next? Oh yeah, sorry. So we need each of these things. We need USDC mint as well. Um, and then it's going to be USDC mint. Now, this is going to be one that you may or may not be familiar with. It's going to be CPI account info mint, uh, which is probably going to give me a compile error, although maybe not. Interesting. Um, semi surprised at that. We'll see what happens down the line. Um, just means that we know that it's of type mint. Um, we know that it's going to be a type mint, so we may as well give that information. And it also gives us the access to different sorts of information on it. Let's just double check this associated with. Yeah, 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 that's right. Subset. And for creating an associated account, you also need a few other uh, a few other things um, so because we're initializing the associated account we also need the rent and we need the system program because system program uh, needs to be called because you're initializing data onto a program derived program derived address and thankfully all of that complicatedness is more or less hidden uh, behind. Oh, I'm surprised that uh, the cargo TML doesn't require um, SPL, but we'll, we'll come back to that. So, I mean, that compiles, we would just have to call initialize user and just make sure to pass in all those accounts. So, so new program signer. Um, oh yeah, we need data account as well. Eh, we won't bother with that. We'll we'll leave we'll leave we'll leave data account out for now. Um we need user data. Um authority is just provider. Do we have provider saved as a separate thing? No no. Program dot provider dot wallet dot public key. Okay, and then uh, what do we got? USDC mint. Oh yeah, and then rent and system program are their own things. Um, rent is anchor.web3.sysvar. Rent and system program Program dot uh, program ID. Perfect. And I mean, let's just save that over there first as well. And that should compile. Uh, clone is not implemented for user data. Um, user data anchor language serialization is not implemented for. Oh right. So. What I forgot to do here was I put an account, but I should have put an associated. So that should fix that. Clone is not implemented for user data. So we got public struct, public first deposit, um, sorry, user data, program account, um, token program info. 
What's more strange is that I'm not getting errors. Ah, okay, okay. Can't find mint in this scope. So if you want to use mint, let's just as quickly show this in. Uh, So in Anchor, there is the language, but there's also SPL, which is a couple of um, fun things in it. So there's the DEX, which is for interacting with Serum DEX, and there's also the token, which is just for interacting with the Serum token. Um, and because it's called SPL, all we have to do is just do anchor-spl equals, I think this is it, 0.5 and then try to recom recompile that and see what happens. Okay, whatever, that's got some stuff to do. Um, and then what are we doing next? Well, for fun, let's just let's record the time uh, at which the account was created and just store that. CTX dot accounts dot what is it? Um, user data dot first. Um, oh, sorry, I have to do let I don't know user data equal and mute uh, CTX dot accounts user data. Clock dot Unix timestamp. And just sort of double check that. Okay, what are we missing? Mint is not found in the scope. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we need to import that. So now we've got uh, use anchor underscore SPL token, and then we want, I don't know, mint. We'll add some more stuff to it later. Unexpected token, um, unable to parse file. Hmm. The real question is why this is messing up and this isn't uh, giving me proper compile errors, but one day, system program, token mint. Yeah, CPI account info mint. That should be fine. So it must be something else. I cannot find clock in this. Ah, my bad. That should be a lowercase a. Okay, that's a lowercase a. Done. Signer doesn't like signer. What don't you like about signer? Ah, uh, because it's a count signer, that's why. 
Okay, what next? Um, clock dot unix timestamp not found in this scope. Oh, it's because I'm being silly there again. Uh, this is ctx dot accounts dot clock obviously. Anchor dot test. Perfect. Okay. Um, I am going to. Actually, I can. All right. I'm going to come back with just this file folder open. Um, because I think then the uh, compile errors will start working again. Okay, and now we are back with the actual stuff. Okay, so we're getting another error. Let's see. Let's see what this is. Uh, can it read property to buffer of undefined? Um, on tests dot money. Okay, can I read property to buffer of undefined? This is index.js, which is the wrong thing. We want dogmoney.js. All right. Um, okay, let's do that. Keeper dot public key. I don't know if that's what I want. Is that the new? Is that the new uh, way of doing things? I guess. Let's see if that works. Try all that, all lowercase. Hmm. This is all bloody new. Uh. So I'm just going to do something totally stupid here. I'm just going to do use USDC, USDC mint, which I know is a public key, uh, send that to buffer. I'm just use that as a program address basis, basically. Um, and then we don't even really need to, uh, it's just not even in there, the, the, the data account. So, but you know, in, in your own examples, you can probably find a better basis. Data account is not defined. Okay, perfect. Okay, get rid of that. Can I read property to buffer of undefined? Yeah, it's a public key. Yeah, USDC mint dot to buffer.
Oh, shit, sorry. Public key is what that was. Let's figure this. Perfect. Initialize user is not a function. Well, that's bullshit. Um, initialize user. Oh, okay. Again, another another common gotcha. You have to switch from camel case, from sorry, from snake case to camel case, uh, when switching between the two. So I think after all of that, after way too long, we have. Um, should have a compiling thing. Cannot read program program signer if undefined. Um, is there an input here? Context initialize user no. Um, what are we looking at? Cannot read property program signer when defined. Forty one. Well, first of all, who gives a crap about making that a constant? Forget that. <laughs> um, second off, yeah, that looks right. It's got a you know, it's a square. It's got a curly bracket. Bracket. Um, program signer equals program signer. Cannot read property program signer of undefined. So usually what it means when it says cannot read property program signer of undefined, um, it means that it's trying to access program signer from one of the uh, inputs on initialize user. Um, but instead of seeing accounts, it's seeing something different. So I must be doing accounts wrong. Um, ah, so there you go. You know what it is? I have capital letter accounts rather than a lower lowercase accounts. Oops. Error, invalid authority is not provided. Eh, it is. Maybe I spelt it wrong. Ah, but again, public key, capital P. All of this probably solved by using TypeScript, which I am not using. Clock not provided. I see this is great because you just uh, <laughs> you just go through all the things. You just go through everything that you're missing, and it will tell you, so long as you're roughly aware of what the uh, what the things should be. So at least it's it's fairly verbose. Could be a lot worse. Perfect. Um, sorry about my color scheme. Um, so we have two program derived addresses now. We've got USDC, sorry, we've got program signer and we've got user data and uh, are both there and ready to go. So that's that's program derived addresses. You know, you, you didn't have to do any program signer um, initialization. Uh, and for user data, you do have to have a initialize account, but you don't need any additional instructions like you would with, say, a normal data account, uh, which again, I presume that you're familiar with because of all the previous tutorials you've done um, in which, as well as accounts, you would have also had an instructions uh, list and uh, assigners for create instructions, you know, like it's like, a, you know, was it program dot something or other? Anyway, it just would have been, you just would have added instructions to create a new account. Perfect. So next up, we're going to talk about cross program invocation. Um, two kinds of cross program invocation those ones that are signed by the user and those ones that are signed by the program. Um, so again, we're just going to make a simple program that receives USDC and returns back a thousand times as much uh, dog money. Um, create mint. I think create mint must default to six. Let's see. Let's just check this out quickly. Uh, if already under 
find yeah initialize mint to six okay good i meant that to be the default um so we have create mint um so let's start making some accounts for the user so we've got user usdc equals uh i think it's wait create token account um provider uh usdc mint and owners is going to be provider dot wallet dot public key Are we gonna have yeah i guess we're gonna have the um yeah we're gonna have the program usdc as well let's call it program vault program dot program id very good Okay, and then we're gonna make a dog money mint. And so again, program.provider, have we not? Uh, yeah, better. Okay, so program.provider, um, and the authority for the dog money mint is going to be the program signer. And then that's it. And then, yeah, we'll make a user dog money. Just replace USDC mint with that. Okay, that's pretty much. I'd say that's most of the stuff that we need. Um, let's just double check. Okay, perfect. So let's let's pass all these things in. Let's pass in. Let's just do the copy and paste thing. User USDC. Program vault. Dog money mint user dog money. Perfect. Um, and then we'll also do that over here as well. And so again, we're going to be doing some more stuff here. So we need token account. I think it's token account. Yeah. So we're gonna have a couple of token accounts and a couple of mints. So what do we got here? We've got USDC mint, we've got user USDC, which is it's gonna be a CPI account, info, and it's gonna be a token account. And then we're gonna have program vault, which is again gonna be CPI, CPI account, info token account um, then we're gonna have dog money mint <laughs> uh, which is a CPI account and that's gonna be mint and then we're gonna have user dog money uh, sorry let's fix that and then again it's going to be a CPI account info token account perfect um, and see they, they've all they've already been initialized right we've already created all these token accounts so there's nothing to uh, nothing to think about there now let's just quickly check if that compiles and if everything gets passed in correctly okay it's passing and then again if you want to check the uh, then you just check the program logs and just see what's come out. And 
that's the log message for creating the associated account. Uh, and there's, uh, there's us logging the current time, which looks good to me. Right, so we, should, we don't really care about that too much. So we've got two things. We have two, two types of um, cross-programming implication to show you. Um, let's just do uh, the easier one right now. Okay, so okay, so first off, uh, transfer USDC. So this is, this is going to be cross-program invocation. So in order to cross-program invocation, you need to have a list of accounts um, that fit into this. So transfer, I wonder if we'll go to the definition. Okay, cool. Uh, this is the account struct that you know has been de de you know, defined in Anchor um, for this particular purpose. But you know, this was this was written by Armani. Um, it's not it, it's not by default available. So while well, transfer and mintu are here, there's probably some functions that would be called from the SPL token. Like for example, I'm pretty sure freeze isn't here. Um, yeah, there's burn, but there's no freeze. But I mean, no one uses freeze anyway, but as an example, that struct is not available. So we need to make sure that we have from to an authority uh, accounts being transferred um, as a CPI account. So from here will just be CTX accounts dot uh, user sorry user usdc um dot to account info because you pass it as account info uh, and then again two is the i think we call it program vault um again convert that to account info just because of how it's transferred around when doing cpi and then the authority is actually going to be it's going to be the user authority um, actually, I wonder if I just, I'm just going to rename that user authority just because I think that's, uh, well, whatever, we'll leave it as that it is right now. Authority seems fine. Um, Accounts.authority.clone, and we can clone it because authority is a uh, account info. And close that off. Um, and then the program that you're gonna to have to call. We just have to make sure we have that. That's something that we haven't actually transferred in. So if you notice, we're not, we don't have um, anything here which says what the account is. So all, 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 all programs are stored on accounts in, um, how do you say it? All programs are stored on accounts in Solana. So we also need to store, let's just see if I can get it here. So we've got token program um, it's account info again, but it is an executable, so you can you can sort of mark it as executable, uh, which we will approach later. So ctx accounts dot token program, uh, and that's also dot clone, uh, and then finally. We just create the CPI context, which is sort of similar to uh, what's being done here. You know, this is this is just creating the uh, context and initialize user in the RPC. It's all kind of creating the context in the background. So CPI context new with signer. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, my bad. CPI context. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. New. CPI program, comma CPI accounts. Not cool. And then we have token, and then we've got transfer. Oh my god. Uh. Uh, ah, now we need the amount. Uh, let's 
say Matt is a U64. So we pass in the CPI context and the argument, which is a Matt. And then we have to put a little question mark at the end because there could be an error. Uh, and this will just catch it for us. Um, so okay, let's let's just let's just quickly test that. Um, okay, so we've got user USDC. So await mint to account um, program dot provider dot oops sorry comma USDC mint user usdc amount oh jesus was it new anchor dot vn i don't know 10 was it 10 uh it's called 10 5 times 10 to the power of 6 uh and mint authority oh yeah who's got the mint authority that's the provider program let's just put this in the line program dot provider dot wallet dot public key perfect that should mint well And then I think that's ready to run. That needs to import Splash. Okay, so again, we get this cannot read property program signer but undefined. Um, and I, I've intentionally let this error happen uh, as is the case in some tutorials because what I've forgotten to do is I've, for, I've added a, an argument here, but I've not ar added an argument here. So it assumes that the first argument is the amount, the U64, and that whatever comes after it is the um, account's context, but that, that no longer exists. So there's nothing there. So we've had to put amount first, and that probably still will cause another error, but whatever it is, we'll fix it easy enough. Token program not provided. Uh, that's simple enough. Um, do token, yeah, yeah, yeah. Token program. I think I even have it up here. Yeah, token program ID. Let's see how it likes that. Promise rejected with falsy or no. Okay, cross program invocation with unauthorized signer or writable account. So again, I've been very kind uh, to you guys and I've included all of the normal things that people do wrong, which is namely me. So everything which experiences change uh, must be marked as mutable uh, in Solana. So you have to say that this is gonna be changed so user USDC is going to be changed because the data gets updated um, to reflect the fact that we've sent all the money over and program vault also gets reflected. Um, that should fix it, but let's just see how it goes. Yeah, and there it goes, passing. Uh, just to zoom in like a few more times. Make it even more readable. And then stop printing out that console.log thing. Cool. Okay, so that's that's cross program invocation one. Um, so let's do some, let's just let's just add a test just to make sure that everything is happening as we want it to, which is not too you know it's a it's a reasonable uh, expectation. So. So let's do this. Uh, await 
get token account um, program dot provider and then it's user USBC. And actually you're right, I will fix that as well to, to, to use camel case. Oh my god, why does it keep doing that? Assert. Am I doing something wrong? Assert. <laughs> okay. Uh, assert. Okay. Uh, user. User USCC data. Um, dot amount. Dot equals new anchor.bn zero. So this is confirmed that we sent over all the money just for uh, the sake of things. Assert is not defined. Oh, that explains a lot. Um, okay, well, all we have to do is <laughs> const assert equals require Assert. Fair enough. Perfect. Okay, so that's another passing test, or well, <laughs> the same passing test with multiple things added to it. Um, so that was the first type of cross-program invocation. We created a transfer struct with all the correct accounts. Um, we got the program, created the context, and we invoked the uh, cross program. So this should be, see, this is, there's sort of like, a, it's basically like a wrapper that uh, Armani has created uh, for calling uh, the SPL token, just like constructing, the, making the instructions, so the accounts and the ID and all the arguments. Uh, and we don't even have to think about any of that. So it's all very handy in Anchor. And then next up, yeah, let's do it there as next. Um, cool. Um, so Sorry, that's a uh, let um, amount dot. Oh, what is it? It's like checked multiplication. Which you just have to do in case there's like a overflow. Um, look to Norbert's Synthetify repo or some of the other examples to see examples of checked multiplication and checked division. Um, Okay, so what's next? So, all right. Be all right, so th this is the, so the second type of pro cross program invocation is where the program is going to sign stuff for you. So you're just going to kind of get used to this idea that um, as well as the accounts and the program and creating the context, you now also need to include the seeds that are used to create the program derived address, which acts as the program signer. So let's start off with this. Let's go seeds equal and um, ctx.accounts dot, I think we used user USDC or, no, 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 no. We used USDC mint, right? Um, dot as ref. Oh yeah, and then we should have, <laughs> we should have the nonce as well. Um, now I have not, use the nonce. Let's just pass in the nonce as well. Uh, I think nonce is a U8, pretty sure. Cool, so that'll just save a little bit of time. Or that's what, I, I don't know, I don't know what you'd do if you didn't have the nonce, to be honest with you. Um, 
Is this correct? No, this looks this looks not correct. You just have to copy the uh, format that's used elsewhere um, in order to use it. So this would be and close brackets. Uh, yeah, it looks right. As ref. Oh yeah, let's just do two dot two account info dot as ref. No. Oh shit. Oh shit. Um. Oh, it's dot key. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> dot key. Because it's the public key, right? No, has no field dot key. Let's just go to account info because I'm just being lazy at this stage. So the, again, the way I would normally do this is, um, yeah, that's, that's fine. So the way that I would normally do this is that I would actually just store USDC mint and the nonce on a data account and access them directly. Because then you've got, you know, you've got USDC mint stored as a public key and you can just do straight as ref straight away. And then again, you can also look up the same thing where nonce is stored as the U8 uh, and it works just fine. So we've got seeds, and then for whatever reason, <laughs> this is what you do at seeds. You do and, and, seeds, dot, dot, black magic, uh, just, just works. Does something, no idea what. Um, okay, so let's CPI accounts, uh, and this time we're going to mint, right? We're gonna to mint to uh, the user's account. We're going to give them so many tokens. They're just going to be super, super happy. Um, okay, so the mint is the dog money mint, uh, and that's going to be to account info as usual. We're going to send it to accounts.user.dogmoney, again, dot to account info. And the authority here, see if you see if you can guess ahead of time what I'm going to put in. Yes, it's program, not bold, it's program signer, uh, dot clone. Uh, actually, we can just put that as useful. Um, and then let's CPI program. Uh, we're still using the token program functionality because token program does, you know, transfer, mints, burns, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and then we're going to do let CPI context. Now, CPI context has a slightly different uh, function to call here. So instead of new, it's new at signer. So let's just just delete delete all that. So we've got CPI program. Yes, we've got CPI accounts. No, not that CPI accounts. Um, and we got signer. And then finally, we're just going to call mint two. I think it's oops. Mint to. Uh, CPI context um, dog money amount. And it could be an error. Okay, and that should be about it, um, at least for the uh, CPI stuff. We have to do some other tests as well. Let's see if that works. Nice. Okay, fail cross program invocation with unauthorized signer or writable account. So again, I have made the utter falsifiable error. So here's something you might not realize as well. Um, the mint also has to be mutable uh, because if it's because it it keeps track of how many tokens are in supply. So it has to update the data account um, on the mint. And there you go, it's all passing now. Um, and just quickly, just, just check out the logs. So yeah, transfer, mint to, you can see the program getting called. Um, I think this is us, I think 6y is us. And there's initialize account. And 111 is the system program. Um, so that's looking good. Okay. So those, I think we've we've done we've done PDAs, and we've done cross program invocation now. So we got two program derived accounts. Just to cover them again, we've got program signer. 
you've got our user data, which stores something stupid like the time that the first dog money was created uh, for this for this user. And then we've got cross-program invocation where we have just regular cross-program invocation where the authority is the user. So if they weren't the signer, it would completely break. Um, and then again, where the program is a signer. And in order to prove that, we've had to include the, um, the seeds and the nonce uh, as part of everything. And then, oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just add a simple check at the end as well. Let's call it uh, user dog money data equals await. Get token account program.provider. Um, we have user dog money. Yeah, we got user dog money. Assert OK. User dog money data. Uh, oh, I, I think how would this work? This would be um, amount dot. Let's just quickly, <laughs> let's just quickly check what big number multiplication is, because big number's got its own stuff. Oh, here it is just multiplication. Okay. Dot mull uh, new anchor dot bn a thousand. That's what we used. So amount equals amount times a thousand. Okay, let's see how that works. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Pass first time. Um, whoops, the fuck? I must have uh, must have copied and pasted something by accident. So those are, the, those are the two main things, but it's very important not to forget that we have a bunch of accounts in here and a bunch of them are untrusted. So I'm going to just try to go through some of the things that I'm aware of for, for checking. So one of the, one of the more obvious ones is a token program, right? So what do we, what do we know about token program? Oops. Like we already know it's, um, yeah, we already know it's address and that it's executable. So I'm pretty sure we can check both of those, but we can check both of those things. Um, so we would do account executable. Oh, so I'm sorry, hash the start. And we can also check that it's the correct ID. So the correct ID should be inside somewhere. Um, that don't burn too. And then we can do a string literal to check that it's the correct ID. And because we passed in the correct one, it has successfully passed. So that's just made our program a little bit safer. Um, what else? do we know? So we know that dog money should have the same owner as authority. Um, so again, this is sort of a, uh, perfect. Okay. So we're going to do an executable again, uh, string literal rather again. So user, dog money dot owner um, equals user authority dot key should should compile so just double checks again that if it's the the user's dog money that it actually is the user dog money that is the authority dot key that's that's the one signing it
perfect and that passes again uh, and I reckon so dog money mint we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a second program volts we'll cover that in a second user USDC uh, USDC mint perfect okay yeah so for user USDC we'll do the same thing again user USDC dot owner equals authority dot key um, we already checked the authorities assigner and what else can we check I think we can check that the owner of the mint is correct as well yeah this, this one's kind of a weird one so dog money mint dot mint authority is equal to is it's an optional uh, <laughs> mint authority is an optional thing so you have to do C option some um, program signer in order to do this check so this just ensures that the uh, the dog money mints is the same person now, undeclared type C option, use of undeclared. Oh, I think we might have to declare that then. Do we have to include it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to actually Im import it as well. So just import it from Solana, program option. This is just like a, a unique thing to Mint Authority being of type C option because the Mint may or may not have it. There's a lot of other things we can check, right? We could check that the program signer's owner is the program account. Um, these are sort of the main ones. Um, let me see, there's string literals, is signer, is there's removal, there's executions. Um, yeah, these are, these are some good ones. Just try to be as like comprehensive as possible if you know that um, so for example so this this part's a little bit more difficult but these are the main things to uh, to check for okay that was quite a lot for a single video and this is already quite long I I would like to do serum as well um, but I guess I will have to come back to that later because this the serum, you know, you have to make sure you've built the decks. You have to use Armani's index.js for uh, building a market, you know, and putting orders on it. There's some extra CPI stuff for transferring tokens if you need to. And then there's sort of calling the buy and sell orders on the decks. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. Um, nothing Nothing too complicated going on here clean it up a bit and put it online somewhere maybe awesome well thanks for watching